Here's how to live stream on YouTube for beginners. We're gonna run through the easiest way to go live on YouTube, and then we're gonna work our way up to some more advanced live streaming software options to help you start live streaming on YouTube like a pro. Now I'm gonna cover off on both desktop and mobile live streaming options here, and make sure you stick around because I'm also gonna be sharing throughout some amazing tools and tips and things to help you level up your live streams. So we're gonna start off by looking at the most basic and the easiest ways to go live on YouTube first. So I'll show you the method on desktop first and we we'll jump into mobile straight after. Now I'm showing you on a Mac, but the process is exactly the same on PC. Now the first thing you need to do is make sure that you do have live streaming enabled on your channel. So you wanna click on your profile picture in the top right hand corner, come down to YouTube Studio, come down to settings, then to channel. Let's go over to feature eligibility. And you wanna make sure that you've verified your channel, which is this bottom section here. So if we click on this, we can see that because our channel is verified, we have access to live streaming. So if your channel isn't verified yet, there will be a button over here for you to verify your channel. With that out of the way, we can close that out. We just wanna come up the top here to create, and then we can choose go live. So if we just wanna go live right now, then we come over here to webcam. We give it permission to access our webcam and our microphone. And we can see in the background that it is pulling in our webcam feed. From here, we wanna give our YouTube live stream a title and a description. We can then upload a thumbnail image just as you would with a regular YouTube video. So I would recommend that you are doing that. So we can click on this, go ahead and find our thumbnail image and hit open. We can add our live stream to a playlist if we'd like. And we also need to specify here if our live stream is made for kids. So you've got a yes or no down the bottom here. So we're gonna leave this as no. Now you probably find that a lot of these settings are just fine as default, but if you want access to a lot more settings and you click this show more button down here, and we can tag this live stream as a paid promotion. We can have automatic chapter markers added, automatic place mentions added to the video as well, along with tags, languages, and a lot of the other settings that you would have for a regular YouTube video too. Again, a lot of these as their default settings are going to be fine. From here, you wanna click next, and that's gonna take us across here to monetization. So if you are part of the YouTube Partner Program and you can monetize your content, you can turn that on or off in here too. I'm gonna to leave this one as off. The next one over is customization in here. We can turn on and off live chat, access to the live chat replay. We can control who can actually send messages while you're live, anyone or just your subscribers. We can also set a delay on how long people need to wait between adding comments to your live stream too. And if we come across and go next again, then this is our visibility. So whether our live stream here is gonna be a private one, unlisted, members only if you're running YouTube channel memberships or if it's gonna be public for everyone on your channel to see. So for most people, I'd imagine you wanna set your live streams here to public, but for the purposes of this video here, I'm gonna set this one to private. And we can also schedule our live stream here too. So it's gonna to default to the current date and time as if you wanna go live right now. But if you do wanna schedule this for a time in the future, then you can pick the day and time and lock it in that way. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on done. That's gonna create our private live stream in this case. And this is now where we can preview our stream. So if we wanna make changes to any of those settings that we just applied, we can hit on edit. And it's gonna take us back to all of those options. We can change out the thumbnail here as well. But we can also see how many viewers are currently watching or are waiting to watch your live stream when you started, how many likes you've got, and if there's been any revenue from super chats or super stickers in your stream already. So from here, you wanna choose your webcam. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a C922 here. We can choose the microphone which I would choose the C922 as well, so not to mess up the screen recording. We can hit share to grab a shareable link that we can send out. So this is our link here. We can hit on here to copy this. We can then share that out to let our audience know that we are going live. I'm gonna hit close on that. All we need to do now is hit on go live down here and we are going live. It's a private stream. You can see it takes a few seconds here to actually start and then we are live. Now you will be live from the moment that it says you are live. So a lot of people we sort of see pause and wait. No, no, when it says you're live, just go, treat it as if you're live, even if you're not seeing anything happening in the chat or anything just yet. So on the side over here, we've got our chat. This is where all the comments and everything will come through. We can adjust this to be sorted by the top 
comments or top chat or live. I personally like to have it on live so I can see everything that's happening in real time. If I wanna add a comment or message back, I can respond down the bottom here. And I also have the ability to add a reaction or an emoji and also create a poll as well to survey your audience while you're live. So we can see at any point that we are live with the live marker in the top left-hand corner. We can see how long we've been live for. We can also see how many people are currently watching our stream and how many thumbs up we have been given. Down the bottom here, you've got your volume level indicator. We've got the ability to mute your microphone by pressing on this one. This next one here, share, will get us again that shareable link that we can send out. And when we're all done and wanna close out the stream, we can just come down here to end stream. It's gonna ask us to confirm that we actually do want to end our stream. We can hit end and the stream will finish. And this is where you're presented with some analytics from your stream with the number of views, the peak concurrent viewers, so the total number of people that were watching at any given point, how much watch time this earned for your channel, duration, and so on. Now the process for live streaming on your mobile is very, very similar, but there are some requirements or restrictions that you will need to meet, that you don't need to meet on desktop. So if we scroll down here, this is YouTube's article on what those requirements are. To live stream on mobile, you need to have 50 subscribers on your channel and no live streaming restrictions that have been applied to your channel in the last 90 days. Again, you need to verify your channel, which I took you through the process to do that, showing you on desktop. So the process is exactly the same here. And you also might need to wait 24 hours before you can start your first live stream. Meaning that when you go through what I'm gonna show you here the very first time, it actually won't let you hit go live. It's gonna make you wait 24 hours as a security thing so that people just aren't creating random accounts, I guess buying subscribers and then just going live. But it's also worth noting if we come a little bit further down, if you have under 1000 subscribers on your channel to help keep YouTube a safe community for everyone, they may limit the number of viewers on your mobile live stream. So again, not a deal breaker, but something that you need to be aware of. But there's also a workaround for this, which I'll be sharing with you very, very soon. Okay, so over on your phone, and this process is the same whether you're on iOS or Android, you wanna open up the YouTube app, come down the bottom middle to that plus button and hit go live. There we go, we're on camera. Now in here again, we can add a title, test stream. We can choose if our video is going to be unlisted or public in here, I'm gonna go unlisted. Again, it's asking us, is this video made for kids? No, this video is not made for kids. And no, I don't wanna restrict my video to viewers over 18. Obviously you can touch on these to make any adjustments here to those settings. Again, under more options, if we scroll down for this, we can schedule this live stream up here for later. Or under advanced settings, we can turn on or off the chat. We can also specify if this video is a paid promotion or includes a paid promotion. And we can also enable and disable monetization up here too. So we'll go back here and come down the bottom here and hit next. Now this is where it's gonna prompt us to take a thumbnail image. So I'm gonna rotate my phone. Here we go. Okay, so we now have a thumbnail image. If you wanna retake that or edit that, then you can tap on the little pencil there and we can upload our own thumbnail image in here too. So I'm gonna to select out of that. Now it's really important here that you need to choose whether you're gonna go live in portrait or in landscape here at this point, because whichever way you leave it is the way it's gonna be for the entire live stream. So choose this one wisely. I'd recommend for most people that you're gonna be doing it in landscape like this. Now just for the controls that we've got access to right now, we can switch the camera from the front camera to the back camera and we can also hit share to copy a link to our live stream that we can then share out before we go live. So I'm going to go ahead now and press go live and we are live. So that was actually a little bit quicker than uh, on desktop. So down the bottom again we can switch our camera. You can see my screen behind me. We can sort the comments here to show the top chat, the live messages and super chats on here as well. If we hit the little magic wand, we can bring up some filters and things in here. Let's back out of that. And then under the three dots down the bottom right, we can save a highlight. We can share our video again to grab that shareable link and we can mute our microphone. So if I go cancel out of this, and again, in the top corner here, we can see that we are live, been live for 59 seconds. There's currently zero people watching and we have zero thumbs up. Joys of doing an unlisted video. All right, so when you're done and you wanna wrap up your stream and close it out, you wanna hit the X up in the top corner here, and we can 
end our stream. It's gonna give us some basic analytics again with views, number of viewers, how long we were live for, etc. We can press on done. And it's automatically going now and is uploading an HD or a high quality version of our live stream. And once that's done, that video is then gonna be live on our channel. Now, if we press the three little dots on the side of that video there, we have the ability to delete our upload to cancel the high definition upload, or we can edit our video in here too. And again, change things like your title, the description, the visibility, and so on. So that's the most basic way to go live on YouTube from your computer or your mobile device. Now, for those of you looking to step it up and add things like animated titles, bring in guests, share your computer screen, or even connect multiple cameras, this is where some more professional live streaming software is gonna allow you to do that. Now, there's so many different options out there when it comes to live streaming software for desktop and mobile, and I will have links in the description below to help you decide which is the best one for you. But to help you really quickly, if you're on a Mac, my favorite live streaming tool is Ecamm live. It's a great mix for someone who is a beginner right through to someone looking for a lot more of the advanced features and controls without being overwhelmed. Or if you're on PC or Mac too, then StreamYard is a great option. And it will also work in your phone browser as well. So it'll work on iOS and Android too. But these tools are really gonna help you level up your live streams. So to show you how easy and powerful this is, I'm over on StreamYard now. I'm just gonna go to create a broadcast. We can choose where we wanna go live to. So I can pick our YouTube channel here. I can give it a title, a description. Again, I can choose if it's public, unlisted or private. But in here, I also get to choose if I wanna go live to Facebook, to a page, a profile, or a group, as well as YouTube at the same time. So let's just go test stream and let's create our broadcast. Again, we we'll wanna give it permission to access our webcam and our microphone. We can then go enter studio. So this is the StreamYard live streaming dashboard. And you can see already, you got access to a lot more control and features in here than you had on YouTube's end. It's telling us down the bottom, you're not part of the stream yet, click to add your audio and video. So let's add this webcam here to the stream and then hey, I am on camera. So whatever we see in this area here is what will actually be our live stream. So if we wanna do things like add in a screen share, I can come down here to share. I can choose screen share. I can come over here to Brave, which is our web browser here, like Chrome. I can choose the YouTube tab and let's hit share. And we can see down at the bottom here, we've now got a video source that we can add to the stream. If I click on this, we can now see my browser window here as well. And what's amazing about this is we've got these presets down the bottom here that we can just click on and change up our layout in real time while we are live. So whether you wanna make it full screen, have yourself picture in picture down the bottom, or even if you've brought a guest in here, then you can both be on screen and looking at the computer screen as well. Now this is definitely not a full StreamYard tutorial. We have tutorials for our top recommended live streaming tools and programs, which I will link down in the description. But it's so easy in tools like this to even bring up your viewer comments while you're live. So if we hit on this, we can feature this comment down below. We can easily bring up banners and text and questions and things that we can have to create a really effective, really engaging live stream. And they can easily add graphics and watermarks. We could bring up a primal video logo easily, like all just with the click of a button. We could bring up a countdown timer or play a video animation, even play some background music in here as well. And this is really the power of these more advanced live streaming tools. You so much more customization, so much more control than you get just going live with the YouTube tools. And again, in regards to StreamYard here, all of this that you're seeing, you can actually do on your mobile device as well. And this actually gets you around the limitations that YouTube has for you needing 50 subscribers and it's throttling the number of viewers that you can have on your live stream for a brand new channel. So not only is it gonna get you around all of those things, it's also gonna give you a far more customizable live stream too. And a of these tools also make it really easy for you to add guests in. So we've got a little button down the bottom here to invite. We can grab this link, we can share it out, and we can bring in other people when we're live and we can change the view, change the way that it looks. Again, share computer screens, bring up graphics, titles, animations, and create really amazing live streams. And again, don't forget to check out the links down in the description. Where we've got more advanced tutorials for the different live streaming tools, but also videos to help you decide which is the best live streaming tool for you. We've also got links to other resources to help you while you're live. Like if you're looking for the best places to find music while you're live, then definitely check out Artlist, Epidemic Sound, and Creator Mix. If you're looking to create animated graphics and titles, then check out Placeit and Video Hive. 
These days using tools and services like this, it is so easy to create a really professional live stream. You definitely don't need to have a big team or a production company coming to run all of this for you. You can do it yourself. Now, a couple of quick pro tips for you. Once you've finished your live stream on YouTube, you can either leave it as is and have all the comments and live reactions and everything all intact, or you also have the ability to edit it down. And you can do that right on YouTube itself. So if you wanna trim off something from the start or take a section out of the middle, you have the ability to open that YouTube editor, remove chunks or sections of your videos. It's not a full blown editor, so you can't move things around, but you can easily trim down and remove stuff that you may not want in your finished video that's then gonna live on as a regular video on YouTube. But you do need to be aware that if you are trimming down your videos using the YouTube editor, you will lose the live comments for any of your live streams that you edit. Pro tip number two is to run a speed test to check your internet connection before you go live. If your internet is not up to scratch, you're likely gonna have a pretty bad live stream with dropouts and issues and things, which isn't good for you. It's gonna add a lot of stress, but it's also not gonna be good for your viewers watching. So all you need to do is head to the website speed test.net or you can download the app, run a test and it's gonna measure your download speed and your upload speed. So for live streaming, upload speed is really what we're gonna be using. So you wanna make sure that it is a consistent, stable connection and not jumping and bouncing all over the place. But also you want an absolute minimum around 2.5 to three megabits per second as a minimum. If you've got above that, then you should be all good. But again, this is also gonna come down to the quality of the live stream that you are pushing out to. And for those of you that are gonna be using the more advanced tools like Ecamm Live, StreamYard, or any of the other ones out there, then I would strongly recommend that you grab something like the Elgato Stream Deck. It's gonna make it so easy for you to program everything up so that at a button press, you can switch camera angles, bring up titles, show and hide guests in your live streams, all without needing to learn and remember keyboard shortcuts or needing to use your mouse and click on stuff. It's a really easy way to help you create professional looking live streams, literally having everything at your fingertips. Now, if you wanna learn how you can make professional looking animated graphics and text and animations to use in your live streams, then check out the video linked on screen. You'll see just how easy it is. I'll see you in there.